Hey guys, Carl here and welcome to the first episode of Av Geek Brief, where we tell you everything you need to know in about two minutes. Today, we're talking about squawk codes and how to use them in an emergency. Okay, before we get started, let's get that timer going. All right, so first, what's a squawk code? The quick answer is it's a four digit number that air traffic control gives pilots to enter into their transponder. The code basically helps air traffic control keep better track of the aircraft in their airspace, which makes everyone safer. And it also gives them a way to hand that aircraft off to another controlling tower or agency. Now, if you're flying by visual flight rules, you'll usually be using the squawk code 1200, affectionately known as squawking VFR. But if you need to fly into busier airspace like Class Bravo or Charlie, you'll be given a different squawk code. For example, in my area, Phoenix Approach controls the Class Bravo airspace over Sky Harbor International Airport, and it extends over where I fly. So Phoenix Approach will give me a squawk code if I want to enter the Class Bravo airspace to transition over or land at Sky Harbor. And I'll get one from Phoenix Clearance Delivery too if I want to take off from there. I'll also get one from Phoenix Approach if I ask for flight following so they can follow me along my route to make sure I get there safely. Now, if you're given a squawk code, you need to keep using it until you're told to stop or you land. But what, where are we at? Crap, we still have to talk about emergencies. Okay, so beyond 1200 and what air traffic control gives you, there's another group of codes that you need to be familiar with in case of an emergency. Now there's gonna be three of these, 7500, 7600, and 7700, each of them having a specific meaning, but all will light up every controller's screen in the area. Now 7500 is a discrete code you would use if your plane's been hijacked. Granted, this isn't too likely in general aviation aircraft, but everyone always jokes that it's a great way to get a fighter jet escort. But seriously, this code is relayed directly to DC, so don't use it unless it's actually happening. Next is 7600, which is used if you lose your radios in flight and can't communicate with air traffic control. Last, we have 7700, which you would use if you're having an in-flight emergency that doesn't fall under the other two categories. Now, there are a couple of ways people try to remember these, like 75, taken alive, 76, technical glitch, and 77, going to heaven. I like to think of them more like an emergency sandwich, with the bread being the more important ones. Because let's face it, 7500 and 7700 are truth life-threatening emergencies. 7600 is bad, but you're likely to make it back down without any issues. And then as long as you remember that 7500 gets you a fighter jet escort, then you can have things memorized pretty quickly. All right, where are we at? Well, we didn't make it, maybe next time, but that's a quick rundown of what squat codes are and which ones to use in an emergency. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed the emergency sandwich. It's literally the way that I learned to tell which squat code was which. And yes, I ate the sandwich afterwards. Anyways, go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't, but make sure to tell us why inside the comments. We're always trying to improve and we'd like to get your feedback if we could. As always, share aviation wherever you can and we'll see you in the next one.